and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just to present myself, um, I'm talking today on the OWASP Open Application Security Curriculum Project. Um, as I was introduced, um, my name is Adrian Winkles. You can reach me on any of these email addresses um, and obviously for further questions at the end. Just a bit uh, about me. Um, I've been involved with OWASP since uh, about 2011, 2012. Um, I lead the Cambridge chapter in the UK. I'm on the European board and I'm also chair of the education committee. And there's a whole range of other research interests that I have ranging from AppSec through to cybercrime and various other things. Okay, so you're just probably wondering why I've put Swiss cheese up. Um, now, a lot of the time, we treat security like Swiss cheese. We add layers and layers and layers on top of each other. And we still don't solve the problems of data breaches. We still don't solve the problem um, of all the different types of attack that we have. Um, but how is this relevant to application security? Let's have a think as we go on. So we've got lots of problems. The whole security space, I could say the word cyber, we've, we know about infrastructure. We've covered infrastructure to death. Um, we've, put, we've done lots of things with the operating systems. We've patching like we've never patched before. It's not just about what we know. It's not just about what we don't know in terms of zero days. Um, some of it's how we use what we've got. We use, we're use we not doing proper cyber hygiene. But a lot of the problem is about applications. The application is our biggest problem, hence the reason we're all here talking today. Don't just take my word for it. Gartner have said in recent years, 75% of security breaches happen at the application. Over 70% of security vulnerabilities exist at the application layer, not the network layer. Um, if we removed just 50% uh, of the software vulnerabilities prior to production, our costs could be greatly reduced by 75%. This is Gartner saying this, this isn't just me. And from this point of view, 92% of reported vulnerabilities are in the applications, not the network. That's an interesting statistic, and we'll break that down a bit more in a minute. And the whole sort of DevSecOps theme of shift left, remember, the cost of fixing a bug in the field versus fixing it during the coding process is comparison between $30,000 to $5,000. It's better to fix it during the development process and not just by a pen test at the end of a final product. So this is where the 92% comes from. 92% of reported vulnerabilities are in applications, not networks. We've covered the network side of things. I'd almost say to death, um, things still get through, but we have those layers. We have those layers of Swiss cheese already. It's the application that's the problem. Applications are a big issue. The trend is always toward vulnerabilities in the software, and this is compounded now because we have multiple layers of our applications. Um, because we've got IoT networks, it could be in sensors, we've got mobile platforms, we've got the concentrating hubs, we've got the cloud backend. Um, we tend to build vulnerabilities in sort of unsafe libraries, unsafe development environments, because security isn't considered early enough in the development process. The problem can be open source, it can be proprietary, um, and there's been various issues over the years, and there continue to be issues over the years. We know that if we start doing pen tests at the end of our development, if we do two weeks of pen tests a year on our application, there's still 10 man months of stuff under the surface. There's all the code flaws, security errors, 
business logic flaws that can all be in hidden under what's visible. So why are those application, application vulnerabilities still occurring? Typically, we still have this chasm, we still have this gap. Security professionals don't know applications. Um, application QA professionals don't know security. And so how do we bridge that gap? Have a think on that for a minute. If we took Weinberg's second law, in terms of application vulnerabilities, if builders built builders in the same way programs write programs, the first woodpecker that came along would des destroy civilization. So fundamentally, sometimes we're building on very poor foundations. So how do we fix these problems? We need security analysts to understand the information held in the application, understand the types of users is half the battle. And that might involve involving the analyst with the design phase, the whole shift left idea. What about the developer? Um, they need to embrace secure application development, bake security into frameworks when you can. And the quality is not just does it work, security is a, is a measure of quality as well. From a QA perspective, Security vulnerabilities need to be considered like bugs, the same way you think of a function bug and tracked in the same manner. From a management board point of view, factor some time into the project plan for security. Consider security as an added value in application. Um, if you like, for that $1 spent up front, you save $10 during development or $100 after release. So, we can look at this from a bottom-up problem point of view. Developers don't have time to test adequately, if at all. Developers don't know secured coding practices. Um, there's always this pressure to be first to market. And often using untested, um, customised off-the-shelf components or libraries, you tend to save time and money. The bottom-up solution can be about education. Developers taught secure coding techniques, whether this is during university, whether it's part of revision programs, as part of um, ongoing education for your development teams. Um, it could be about testing, not just functionality or user experience, but security built in from first principles. We've heard today and yesterday about things like introducing threat modeling into your programs. Um, it's also sanitizing third party products and libraries, testing throughout the software development lifecycle, white box testing, not just black box pen testing at the end. We also have top down problems from a board management perspective, pressure to be first to market focusing on product features and new experience, not security, cost reduction, ignoring security risks, security not being seen as a boardroom priority, and the lack of an organisational security culture. Now, top-down solutions also involve education. Educating the boardroom and senior management is a necessity to build security in from the parts. That education means appointing a site of the board, developing an organisational security culture. So at some point, you need a top-down and a bottom-up approach. You need that equilibrium. Now, the important point here, and this is where it brings me on to the um, application security curriculum, is that you need to educate to build security in. You can't take it at a given. There has to be a dedicated program to educate your security people about applications, your developers about security. And you have to meet somewhere in the middle. So this is the key point. Education needs to be at the key part of it. So there's a need for this education. It could be as simple as educating users, security awareness program, because after all, security is everyone's responsibility. Now, we need to educate developers. 
We need secure coding target under 16s, further education, higher education, continuous education, um, revisiting for your development teams, revisiting for your security analysts. Um, needs, this needs to be embedded into computer science curriculums. There has been some practice. There's been um, some professional bodies, both in the UK, Europe, and some in the US, um, have communities of practice uh, initiative to bring secure coding in line with some of these programs. Um, we are working now on a application security curriculum framework. And we'll come on to this shortly. And people like SciSec, Crest have academic frameworks as well. And taking the existing generation of developers, having secure coding programs, workshops, revision follow-ups, if you like, a dog isn't just for Christmas. So there's a need for education. Your test, your QA testing functions, testing throughout the SDL, SDLC, the software development lifecycle, not just at the end, incorporating some of the OBAS projects, testing guide, ASVS. The board needs to be educated. Educate board mem members to build security from the start as a benefit. And remember, security is everyone's responsibility. So, where does this take us? So, remember what OWASP's main purpose is, to be the thriving global community that drives visibility and evolution in the safety and security of the world software. The, the part of our key mission is to educate, not just the current generation of developers, or InfoSec professionals, but also the next generation, particularly in the context of acknowledged shortage of skills in our sector. See, part of the problem is, in our existing um, security education programs, whether that's cyber, InfoSec, or traditional computer science programs, we don't address application security adequately, if at all. Some regions, there's been attempts um, to address this deficit in the UK, ISC squared, the BCS have been working on an initiative to embed secure coding within the computer science curriculum. Um, again, that emphasis on secure coding techniques. And again, that's something I've been involved with in the UK as well, championing those initiatives. But... The aim of the OWASP Open Application Security Curriculum Project is I think we have an opportunity to coordinate our diverse expertise, a lot of the OWASP projects, other interested parties, and these types of pedagogic programs and initiatives. So we can have an educational strategy that meets the skill expectations required by industry. So part of my working session here is to explore the possibility of OAS having an educational strategy for security programs, particularly because I work with an undergraduate, a postgraduate, but also looking at a requirement for industry in terms of training providers, schools, um, re education programs, all those sort of things um, come under the remit. So, where do we go with this next? So what aspects of application security and skills does industry need? There's got to be some sort of um, gap analysis, um, understanding what the different parts of the sector and of the industry actually require. So what problems relating to application security? There's the next generation of graduate software as computer scientists and security analysts need to solve. So what we really want to do is have a set of learning objectives for bachelors, for master's levels, an application security curricula, and that set of curricula that can be used for 
a whole range of educational and training providers. It's not just academia, this is industry as well. But we're also forgetting about something. One of the things OWASP is known for is its projects. We have some excellent projects out there. We have industry leading projects that both guide, help, train. Tree. But where we probably don't succeed is linking those projects together into a coherent program to say, if you want to know this, use this. If you want to go there, use that. We've got cheat sheets, we've got various top tens. We've got a lot of documentation and a lot of supporting educational products, but there's nothing that actually ties it together. Also, we want to determine a mechanism by which regional or local deliveries of a curriculum should be supported by the OAS community. This could be OAS supporters from chapters or projects, could sit on um, training panels to determine training criteria, could be a critical friend of module design, do things like guest lectures, training academics, train the trainer. Um, we have a chance to engage in those educational communities. And a lot of supporters do, but we don't know who does what, where and when. We'll come on to that in a while. So what's my project proposal, potential bid initiative, if you like? My first objective is, is, is this establish a core set of learning objectives for an application security curriculum. This, if you like, defines the educational requirements necessitated by industry. It has to be industry-led because we're supplying students to meet industry needs or we're retraining existing developers and security analysts um, to meet the next generation of secure software developing environments, etc. So what we've got to do is undertake a gap analysis of existing and missing curricula, learn to meet the requirements outlined by industry. There's been a lot of work on generic cyber or generic infosec curriculums, but we haven't really done application security. And OWASP with the recognised ex industry expertise in application security. So we can do this with liaison with industry, professional bodies, and existing state-of-the-art literature. Second objective, to praise the state-of-the-art application teaching resources and determine areas of non-coverage. Again, gap analysis, existing and missing teaching resources. We already have some. We have world-leading projects that support the AppSec industry. We have Juice Shop, Security Shepherd, WebGoat, to name but a few. Again, achieve things like discovery workshops, industry links, focus groups, that type of approach. Third objective is to recommend an application security open curricula for industry. It has to be open. This is something people take and shape to adapt to what they need, but we develop it from centrally OWASP's expertise. So we produce and disseminate a learning skills framework. This is the idea to empower academia to support industry in the problems they face, both for the current generation and the next generation of software devs, computer scientists, security analysts, in a sort of DevSecOps approach. This open framework can be expected to address teaching requirements at undergraduate, postgraduate, apprentice, and industry certification level training requirements. And it isn't, this is us taking a lead, but it isn't just that there are other key influencers. There's lots of our sponsors, those people that our students go and work for, um, and the professional bodies. This is international 
Cy6, Cybok, uh, ISC Squared, Crest, ACM, IEEE, to name but a few. And objective four, which is always going to be ongoing, is an opportunity for us to pull together all of its wide ranging expertise, its projects, and its dedicated volunteers to engage in these types of education programs and initiatives by having this strategy, mapping our projects to learning objectives. The one thing that I think is still missing for us is linking its projects to requirements. Some people know where to go. Let me share something with you. No, this was a, um, a, a, a an infographic that I came across back in 2015. I think it was buried very, very deeply, but I've always partly been impressed by it. I mean, it says it's a quick developer's guide, which is basically, if you want to know this, go here. If you want to know that, go there. And it was an initial attempt almost at these are the resources. This is what you want to know. These are things you can use. In other words, I really think this is, I want to redo this, but from an educational framework point of view. So who become the beneficiaries of this research and this um, approach? As well as having an indirect impact on the sort of global cybersecurity skill set, immediate benefits of this research would be any global industrial organization with internet facing applications. They would benefit from an open curricula that's been shaped by industry because it helps to address what they need for their next generation of developers and security staff. Both global academic and specialist training providers benefit from a teaching framework um, because it allows them to target the application security skills that industry requires. International professional bodies of members benefit from a more focused accreditation and certification, certification program. And this is something that obviously OS is working on as well. Um, my colleague Grant has spoken on this before. Um, again, it has international populations who better protection of citizens, workforce, critical infrastructure, internet enabled technologies and applications, and international economic prospects, employment benefits because there's more available skilled employee pool to draw from. We keep, we keep hearing about skill shortages, not enough people trained. If we have a curricula, we can target the skills that people need. This is all intended to have a proper impact. We have IT security professionals, software developers trained for um, an industry relevant and trusted because of an open standard that everyone can adhere to. And we can develop those skills for future application security threats. We can have global industrial organizations that have internet facing applications that have their development teams trained to have those applications with security built in. Security will be at the heart of the development life cycle. It's not gonna be an afterthought. Again, globally, academic institutions, specialist training providers, provide new industry relevant degrees and diplomas and bespoke training programs that have been internationally endorsed as part of an application security framework. Again, professional bodies support with their respective frameworks and skills. Um, again, more focused accreditation certification programs that meet their users' needs. And the overall skill set of security professionals, software developers internationally, means that things like critical infrastructure, internet-enabled technologies, uh, internet technologies 
or the applications are better protected. Again, and overall, it enhances the international skill set. So what are the next steps? What can we do? Oh, one of the things is you want to bolster the education committee. We have some key members that are working there, but more people are useful. Um, I think there's a need to better understand what has been provided in education settings and what OMAS relation to education is. One of the things I'd like to ask the OMAS staff team to do via the board is to reenact having a database of application security chain trainers. Again, this might help with certification branch of what we do as well. Um, a database of academic supporters and contacts and a mechanism to keep them up to date. So at all levels, a database of project leaders supporting academic curriculums, modules, projects. So where are our projects being used? I know what tools I use. And I extensively use a lot of OS projects. In terms of the programs that I put together, I use Security Shepherd, I use WebGoat, I use Zap, um, I use Juice to name but a few, as well as Top 10, Cheat Sheets, ASVS. Where else are they being used? I don't think we know. Also, a database of chapter leaders supporting academic programs or offering talks and supporting training programs. Now, we have an intended outline, ideas, proposal. We need funding. Um, I've got some ideas about funding bids. Uh, I've been talking to some people. But this needs to be looked at from an international perspective. We're going to need to do questionnaires. But what questions do we ask? Target audience, maybe the leaders list, the community list. Is this something we can pass around to all chapters? But how do we reach trainers? How do we reach the other universities who are using OWASP content? And how do we then map those OWASP projects to our objectives? So, in a way, I've talked a lot <laughs> about what I'd like to do, but I'd also like to talk a lot about, talk to, and answer questions about what people's thoughts are. Is this something you'd like to get behind? Is it something like you, you'd like to be involved in? Is this something that um, is needed? I certainly think it is, but I'd like to have more sort of feedback on to where we'd like to take this, where we'd like, like it to go. Um, and I'd really like to stress this isn't just about doing um, bachelor's or master's level questions. It's about industry training as well. I've targeted particularly at bachelor's and master's because that, I have a particular requirement for that, but an open curriculum is there to support all. So I finished a little bit early. Um...